which was literally insane. Alrighty, y'all. Hi. Welcome back to Z Renee's The OT Chronicles. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. I am just, as you can see, we're in a new setting and I'm just excited and I'm happy and I'm here to kind of answer all of you guys' questions, talk about my first year as an occupational therapist and just like update you pretty much on what's happening. So yeah, make sure you hit that like button hit that subscribe button and then leave me a comment down below. So I'm so excited to be back and just chit chat with you guys. All right, let's get into it. <laughs> okay, first things first, obviously, if you have been following me on Instagram, um, you know that I have moved. So I now live in Washington DC and I am just ecstatic, like, ugh. I am just so happy, like I'm literally sitting on my couch right now and I'm just in awe. And yeah, moving to DC has definitely been such a great, amazing experience so far. I'm already kind of accomplishing things that I wanted for myself. And so yeah, um, I live in Washington DC now. <laughs> That's the biggest thing. Um, let's get into how my first year as a clinician actually was back in North Carolina. All right, so the nitty gritty. So in North Carolina, as you all know, I went down there for a position that allowed me to kind of do both hand therapy and pediatric occupational therapy too, which is very uncommon. Um, and the reason that I sought out a position like that was because of my last two rotations, my level twos were in hand therapy and pediatric setting and I didn't know what I wanted to do. Now, back in New Jersey, it's like unheard of to find a position like that. And so when I got the opportunity and I found that position in North Carolina, I was like, you know what? Let's go ahead and take a leap of faith. Whoo, that leap of faith, honey. Um, I quickly realized why that is so uncommon and why that's not a good thing. Um, balancing both being in hand therapy and being a peds therapist is terrible. Um, I would never suggest that for anybody. If you're watching this video, don't do that, sis. I'm telling you right now, it's coming from my experience. Don't do it. Um, I would definitely say I learned a lot at that position. But yeah, your girl only stayed there for three months. It was literally insane. And my mental health was just do, 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 <laughs> pretty much. Um, I was working very, very long hours. Um, I was treating 56 patients a week, which was literally insane um i was just being literally overworked um to the point to where like i mentally just could not do it anymore and i was like honestly going through a depressive episode like that was just not the environment that i needed to be in for my mental health so i found work elsewhere <laughs> Now, when you kind of are in your first year as an OT, everyone always tells you, you need to stay one year at a position because that just looks good on resumes. I mean, that's what I was told. Now, for me, in my opinion, I don't care. I really don't care. Like, I have switched jobs so many times in my first year that honestly, it does not matter. We're an OT. Everybody's gonna need an OT. Don't let nobody tell you that you gotta stay somewhere where you're unhappy for a year. Don't do that because your mental health is very important and you need to prioritize that. So listen, if you need to stay at a job for a month, stay at a job for a month. If you need to stay at a job for three months, stay at a job for three months. Like it's really not that big of a deal. Now what I wouldn't suggest is job hopping 24 seven. Like, nah, don't do that. But like, you know, your first year is for you to experience stuff. Like you shouldn't be just going along with it because it's money. Like money is not everything. I'm gonna say that again. Money is not everything. Money is a, a big part of it, but it's not everything. Like you literally should not be waking up and hating going to your job. Like, no, you should not be feeling that way. And that's how I was feeling. And so I had to remove myself from the situation and that's what I did and I don't regret it. I don't regret anything that I did in North Carolina at all. So after that crazy behind show, um, I went to another position and I worked there for about like eight months. Um, now this position, 
I had better co-workers, better work-life balance, but the pay was absolutely trash. <laughs> Now, if you are a therapist watching this or a student, you need to understand how pay per visit works. Pay per visit is not it, unless you have like some outside sources of income because you literally do not get paid for cancellations. Like they sell you a dream like, oh, you can make $100,000, you can make $80,000. But that's if you have a consistent caseload. That's if your kids show up all the time. Like, no, honey. It's not that sweet, it's not that sweet. Don't get played, because I got played. And I quickly had to figure out how the heck am I supposed to be paying my bills when my paychecks were now going from a salary position to a pay per visit model. They were significantly less, so I had to figure that out. And the way that I did is I picked up another position. And so I wound up working at a school district and then changing my outpatient clinic job to a part-time position. And so with that, I was making very good money. Like I was making a regular like salary position salary and then outpatient money too which outpatient and pay per visit models you get paid significantly higher rates essentially because you don't get paid separately for documentation you just get paid off of what you're treating so some rates so you can kind of understand that is a pay per visit model like i can say what i was getting paid for that for there now that i don't work there anymore but um I was getting paid $50 an hour for my outpatient clinic. My starting salary at that ham therapy peds place was about $68,000. And then that school position that I was working at, I was getting paid around $37 per hour. So after I left that salaried position, I started working that outpatient position and that school position at the same time. So I was making a lot of money then. Um, now, around that time, I was kind of trying to figure out like, do I want to stay in North Carolina? Do I want to move somewhere else? Like, it's really not about just the job. It's about the location. It's about um, being happy, being closer to family, things like that for me. And I ultimately kind of decided, yeah, I'm going to be looking for positions to move. And so that's what I did. Now, when looking for positions to move, essentially, like, I had in my mind, I still wanted to be in pediatrics. I absolutely love and adore pediatrics. So I was like, yeah, I still want to do peds. But um, I need to figure out something where it still challenges me because I was getting to a point, honestly, that like I was getting very stagnant and repetitive and just doing the same things with the kids. And I was like, oh, like I need to switch it up. Like, this is just not challenging me anymore. And I'm someone, I need to be challenged daily to feel like I'm really being like, using all of my skill set, if that makes sense. So I was like, you know, I'm gonna move to Washington and I am going to try to find a position that's still in pediatrics, but it's not that like same diagnoses that I'm seeing, the same kind of treatments that I would do, even though I'm comfortable now, I still wanna challenge myself. And so that's what I did. And I found a position here in Washington, D.C. that allows me to do that. It's a special education school and it's with populations that I have never kind of treated. I have experience treating some of the diagnoses, but a lot of those diagnoses are rare diagnoses. So I'm constantly going to be challenged and that's ultimately what I wanted. My salary is way better here. Um, and it's a salary position, so I'm, girl, I was like, get it to it because benefits, PTO, all that stuff, I needed it because that's not what I had in North Carolina. So I don't know, y'all. Like, I am just at a better space. I don't know if you can tell. Like, I am just at peace now. I'm so much happier. Um, and I'm just excited to see what Washington, D.C. can show me and the growth that I have here. Um, and yeah. <laughs> So overall, as a clinician, my first year as an OT, I would say I learned so much. Like when it comes to documentation, it's so important that you do not prioritize that over your happiness, over your peace. Like I made it a point, like if I end my shift at five, I'm done at five. Don't talk to me about nothing. I'm not doing no documentation at home. I'm not doing that. If I'm done at five, I'm done at five. And when I get in that car and I get in my house, uh, OT, the your brain is off. Like, no. And that's something that I'm working on because when I tell you in North Carolina, 
I would take my documentation home and I would be working until 11 o'clock at night, midnight, doing documentation, thinking of ideas. Uh-uh, no. I learned that in my first year. Don't do that. No, I'm not doing that. Like I was so stressed mentally, physically, like I wasn't even eating right. I wasn't drinking enough water. Like everything was just crazy. I was just, no, uh-uh, uh-uh, no. <laughs> I don't know how to say it. Don't do that. Please don't do that. Another thing I would say is when it comes to treatment planning, when it comes to goal writing, like really sit down and talk to your patients. Like one thing about me is I've realized I'm a Pisces. Shout out to all my Pisces. But like I'm very emotional. Um, I connect very easily with my patients and it's very easy for me to kind of fall into the trap of I really want to see the best for them. I will do anything for them. And I just get emotionally attached. Um, and that's something that I am working on now in my second year because I was really like taking all of the dramas that the families were having, especially when I was treating adults and I was doing like mental health diagnoses. Like I was taking that home. And that's one thing that you really don't want to do. You need to have those boundaries in place. That's why I said when it's five o'clock, it's five o'clock, I'm done. Um, when it comes to, if you are someone that's working with mental health diagnoses, for instance, I worked with bipolar disorder, conversion disorder, um, I've worked with a couple other ones too. And then I worked with an adult who actually had like sensory processing disorder, which was very different for me because I'm used to seeing children with that. So like, there's a lot of stuff that happens. There's a lot of heavy, heavy things that happen within those kind of mental health diagnoses that you want to be very very aware of you can take those things home so you kind of want to you take that information and you help them as much as you can but then you leave it at that like just leave it at your job do not take it home because it'll bleed into your other relationships it'll bleed into so much more so that would be one of my biggest tips that's something that i'm still working on if you guys have any tips leave that in the comments down below i'm just a very emotional person especially my kiddos the amount of money i have spent on toys for my kids like <laughs> If you see them on Instagram, if you really do watch me on Instagram, I be posting about it. Like, I really just, when I'm sad, I will buy stuff for my kids. It's just, listen, I'm, I'm getting it together, I'm getting it together. But yeah, um, that's something that I'm definitely working on. <laughs> Alright, so I've been talking for a while. I kind of like chatting like this with y'all. Let me know if you like this. Um, I'm going to be posting like some stuff about my apartment. Um, obviously, I'm not going to be posting like too much because, you know, I'm safe privacy your girl we dealing with that but yes um more ot stuff to come more lifestyle stuff to come i'm gonna start vlogging um i really just i want to get back into this because when i say i was in such a like rut for the longest time and now that i'm finally here now that i feel probably the happiest i've ever been in such a long time um i'm just i want to share it with you guys and oh my goodness your comments your DMs, Lord have mercy. Like if I could just give you all like a virtual hug. Oh, thank you guys so much for your support. Stay tuned um, for so many more things coming. Um, and just, yeah, I'm just so thankful for you all. So if you really like this video, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment down below, helps with the algorithm. And yeah, all right, y'all. <laughs> I will see you all in my next video. Bye!